The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology. Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.za. All over the world, you are seeing a lot of power. So we look at the way that you are. This is 60 megawatts. People in the sector, how much does it cost to come up with a plan to enter 60 megawatts? Yeah, two. 120 million. Mas se tu coda se lá 60 megawatts, se tu vuti, o menos se tem a maquete se apanhe, há o 120 milho, o bagulho é muito pouco mais da parte, anjo, só e por conta como é que é fundo se o canhete se som que dá o ne, já logo na ma projet, o que me dá em cima, se for nem se vê em cima, a vanta a ganhar a chuva de Besay dropping, but it's full and jar of good into the end. Then it too will never pass. But maybe they will not do that one is crazy. It's a funny artist, isn't it? We are paid for a panel. Can you can you do this? I want to allow in the art lava. Now we're doing seven. As we paint, I said, I have to be done. But we paint the part. Can you do this? So, for us to be perfect, as we look for God, we are putting one in the eye. Now we put to our food number in common there, but if we are done, the markets. So, in the Niga, it was explain what the company does. Zimbabwe Power Company is embarking on a number of generation expansion and rehabilitation projects in order to meet the current and future electricity requirements. As you may be aware, we are short of electricity currently, and we also project if nothing is done, our future remains big or black, actually. A Blawai reporting project is one such rehabilitation project. We've got other projects in Munyati to rehabilitate Munyati Power Station. We've got another project in Arare to rehabilitate Arare Power Station. Wange as well, while it is running, it is not running full capacity, so we are also rehabilitating it. 
So this is the broad scale of the rehabilitation projects. Nawayo is one of them. Nawayo Power Station was commissioned between 1947 and 57 at 120 megawatts with six cooling towers. Power plants are designed for a 30-year life. So if we look at commissioning from 1947 to 57, 30-year design life, the plant is way on its first design life. In 1998, ZPC carried out planned refurbishment of the station. A prior assessment of the station had considered two by 15 megawatt units and economic for refurbishment as we decommissioned. The decommissioning of these units reduced the Blauer power station capacity to 90 megawatts. So basically we are saying in 1998 some intervention was made or was done <coughs> and it then reduced after assessing the condition of the plant that was there, the capacity was reduced to 90 megawatts. Let me say something. I would have to officer on a skewer. We are here to try and make this is problem is coming down here. Well, she's a good one. I think you mean I'm going to move to the movie. I'm going to go back to this line. Then I'm going to explain the movie. If you have a power station, they sing 62. I just wanted to just say that. It's now 62 years. Yet he likes young when you can move to 30 years. After which it's supposed to be different. Good morning. After an initial operating period of, of 30 years, power plants can be refurbished in order to add life to them. The adding of life is what we call repowering. Repowering gives 15 to 20 year life. In 2015, ZPC carried out a what called remnant life assessment of the Blawaya power station generating plant. This assessment is meant to determine how much life do we still have on the critical equipment that is associated with our power station. The results of that remnant life assessment, <coughs> assessment demonstrated the ability to restore Blauer power station to 19 megawatts. So after we assessed scientifically in 2015, it was established that we could still restore capacity to 90 megawatts. At the same time, a condition survey was done on all the six cooling towers. <coughs> A condition survey is meant to establish the structural integrity of plant and equipment. What it means there is we need to look at all plant and equipment, including that which is uh, like a building. How much life do we still have it, or it will collapse on, on us at the slightest of any problem. So this is the condition assessment that was done on all the six good cooling towers in 2015. Now, from 1998, looking at the current status, when Blower Power Station was refurbished, it's now 20 years, <coughs> but we have said the refurbishment adds between 15 to 20. As such, current generation is situated to the order of 20, 30 megawatts, and the prob problematic area being the boilers. By design, Blower Power Station is configured to fit electricity <laughs> directly to local consumers as well as onto the national grid. I think I need to spend a bit more time on that. Power stations feed into the national grid. Well, by national grid, you can imagine a big, uh, if it was a ring, let me give the example of, of, of water. If it was a ring of water, pressurized with water, where each of the recipients can draw water from. This ring is like the grid. Consumers will be drawing from the grid. Power stations will be pouring each into the grid. So all power stations will pour into the grid and all consumers will now draw from this grid to do whatever economic activity they need to, be it households, be it industry. 
But at the same time, we want to say if this power station, if there's a problem with the grid, we don't want all power stations to then come off. We then give provision for the power station to also be able to feed other consumers directly so that it will remain on whether the grid is healthy or the grid is not healthy. So Blawa's power station, like every other power station, has got this facility to feed into the grid and to feed onto its local consumers. Now, the Blawa metropolitan province, the power requirements, or the power that is required for the Blawa, Blawa metropolitan province, on average, is about 200 megawatts. It, it can get up to 250. If industry was fully functional, the average would be actually around 250 megawatts. Meaning, the 90 megawatts that we want to generate or to restore will pour into this grid and will draw as Blawayo Metropolitan up to 250 megawatts. So the balance of that, the balance of the Blawayo Metropolitan province power requirements are catered for from the national grid. Therefore, it comes from Kariba, Munyati, Wange, all over. So in electrical, in electricity industry, we pour all our generation into a grid, consumers then draw from it. It is not like each area has got its own and it stands alone. We pour into the common grid, we then draw it, all of us from that same grid. In fact, that principle expands to, to the area of Inda across nations. That's why you hear at times uh, we say we want to import power from South Africa, <coughs> from Mozambique. It's because of this interconnection where they can also pour into our grid and we can start drawing from it. So there is sharing of resources across the regions within Zimbabwe and across the, the, the Sadak region the so-called Southern African power pool. Okay. <clears throat> now, the, talking about the station refurbishment, the power power station is to be refurbished so that it can generate 90 megawatts. The project is being funded under a 110 million line of credit from the Exit Bank of India. This is a government-to-government -government facility that was uh, arranged to support the repowering or the refurbishment of Blawayo power station. The, the work involves replacing old boilers with new boilers which are environmentally friendly and refurbishment of existing turbines <coughs> together with the rest of the plant. When it has been done, we expect to generate 90 megawatts reliably. I want to emphasize reliably because you can't get it 90, but if it is not reliable, there will be times that it is not available. Like as we speak, we're talking of 20, 30 megawatts for the power station, but right now, I'm told, there is no generation, it's zero. But we've got electricity because we are drawing from that grid, coming from <coughs> elsewhere. Now, what are the benefits and outcomes from the project? We expect the following benefits reduction in load shedding. Once we can pour more into the grid, it helps everyone, load shedding will reduce. Therefore, if there's no load shedding, there will be increase in economic activity in the nation, national saving on foreign currents through reduction in power imports. If we save on our foreign currency, it can then be directed to other need areas, be it for health, our, our drug situation in hospitals can then improve, be it for any other national interest, because we'd have done something as Blawayo at Blawayo Power Station. Then also creation of employment at the station, there will be people employed uh, and in the economy at large <coughs> during project implementation and after commissioning. <coughs> then improved livelihoods of the generality, generality of all Zimbabweans. Generally, life becomes better without load shedding. Now, progress with repowering. The Exim Bank of India completed pre-qualification of prospective bidders. Uh, like I said, it is being funded from India. They then select the contractors 
from which who will be, who will be doing the project. So they select a number of them, that's the pre-qualification process I'm talking about, of which we are advised to have been pre-qualified. The ZPC have now given them the documents or the documents that define the exact work that we want done at Blaue Power Station in a request for proposal. We need now those bidders to give us a quotation, if a quotation for the work. That's where we are with the Blaue Power Party. So in, 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 in picture terms, we need our documents approved by our regulator, procurement regulator, which has happened. We submit to the pre-qualified bidders, then there will be tender, the tender process then moves on to site visit, adjudication, contract signing, then we can commence. The rough timelines are what we are following. You will see that we are saying between April 20 and March 22, we should be in implementation, meaning those <coughs> benefits of employment should start being realized at that stage. Employment during project implementation. Now, there are frequently asked questions, one of which is why repowering? Why are you doing repowering? The first point is repowering presents, we are calling it a low hanging fruit. The mathematics there shows to build a new plant, if we decide let's abandon Blawayo, let's go and build elsewhere. A new build typically requires about 2.5 million per megawatt. For example, we are building a new Wange 7 and 8 for 1.5 billion for us to get 600 megawatts. That gives us 2.3 million per megawatt. That's the arithmetic. Even then, Wange is 78 is next to Wange 1 to 6, so it has got benefits of other shared facilities. That's why that's 2.3 versus the 2.5. When you then look at repowering, typically you're looking at 1.3 million per megawatt. Blawayo are saying 110 for us to get 90, which is about 1.2 per megawatt. Harare 2 is another example where we've got 72 million to get skist. It's a project that is also supposed to start in the, in the, during the course of this year. Uh, we'll get 1.2 million per megawatt. So from a cost point of view, to say how much money do you need for you to embark on this project, repowering gives is an easier target to, uh, to, to run for in terms of the power that you will get. The second point has been, there has been concerns about emissions. To say, why not build it elsewhere? Here it is close to the city, there will be emissions. The point is there's improved technology on emissions ever since the 1947, 57, that, that's why it was commissioned. There's been improvement in technology. The technology that is coming with the boilers will address the emission issue. This is what elsewhere is happening, and <coughs> that is the same technology that we are bringing forward, bringing to, to, to Blawai. Then there is still life that can be extracted from the equipment. When you do that remnant life assessment, and you see that there is life, it's like if it was your car and you are saying, I can't throw it away, I can still do work on it, and it can still do work for me. Then you need to put in a bit of money and get the the, the, the the, the value out of the equipment. Then thermal, thermal power stations remain necessary for base load. Uh, if we were to rely on Kariba alone and solar, without then not going for thermal, because there's been a concern that why go, why go thermal, why not go green alone? There are climatic issues that can arise like has happened with Kariba. So you need thermal to provide enough power for the minimum load that you are going to run as a nation, then you can pick up and down on your hydro, like the Kariba. So it remains a necessary, a necessary investment or a necessary power station to the whole grid. It also has got a much shorter turnaround time than if we were to start from afresh. So those are some of the issues that promote or are in favor of repowering.
I also want to mention it's not just in Zimbabwe or here in Blawai that we want to do repowering. It's a concept that's done across the world. Now, there are support projects that need to happen in support of the repowering project. There's the refurbishment of Kami Waterworks and the new 20 kilometer pipeline and refurbishment of cooling towers. This is so that we can get water for the power station. In our discussions with the Blawai City Council, we had identified the source of water as Kami, and we have a water agreement to the effect that we'll be able to draw water, put in a new 20 kilometer pipeline together. In fact, as part of the project on the ZPC side to support the repowering project. This power evacuation, we need to have all the equipment to take the power from the power station directly to the grid. Over the years, it has been deteriorating. We have to put money into it as well. There's, there's the demolition of cooling towers one and two. I'll spend a bit more time on that one. But let's, see, let's understand it's in support of the major project. That is the area of view of the oil power station. Where, sorry, <coughs> where we can see the the six cooling towers, starting coming from the left, cooling tower one, two, three, four, five. The first two are cooling tower one and two, which are the smaller ones. Okay, let's move on. Uh, now, as part of routine asset management practice was the decision to do a refurbishment and what to refurbish is driven by <coughs> is, is driven by an assessment of the condition of the plant that we are looking at. So that is exactly what we did as ZPC. We commissioned the consultant Motec Engineering with Zimbabwe, who was in partnership with the Road Ringin engineering solution of South Africa. And they assessed the structural integrity of the Lawai Power Station plant and equipment, including the, tower, the cooling towers. The results of the cooling tower assessment is as follows. <coughs> this is an exact extract from the report by the consultants. Under section 6.3.2, as opposed by redundant towers one and two. We are saying redundant, on the sense that you may recall when you commissioned it was 120 megawatts, we then along the way came down to 90. At that point, this was extra capacity. They were now redundant. Okay. They say the management of the power station should consider the risks posed by the two redundant cooling towers, one and two. These are the oldest structures, and they manifest advanced symptoms of deterioration, including some holes right through the hyperbolic shells. If one of these towers were to collapse, it might inflict damage on adjacent structures, including adjust, adjacent cooling tower number three. Demolition by implosion, if executed successfully, would eliminate this risk. This is a direct extract from the report by the consultants. So now the question is why demolition? We are being driven from <coughs> that report, that assessment, that scientific research that was done. Cooling Tower 1 and 2 have deteriorated badly. The event of an uncontrolled collapse of the structures would lead to loss of life, loss of lives. If that cooling tower were to collapse, we don't know when, I think we can all imagine what would happen. We could also imagine some structures, if we think of the changes that are happening in the, in the, in the climate, they could be a cyclone. I mean, it, it has been standing there for all these years, it's standing there today and we're happy. They could be a cyclone. Think of cyclone, Idai what it did also in Mozambique and, 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 and Madikanet. Structures that are not structurally sound gave in. If something like near to that were to happen, in Blawai or in this region, close to this region, this, those cooling towers will collapse. Whether it will happen today, tomorrow, God knows. But it will collapse and it will lead to loss of lives. I want to emphasize loss of lives because that to me is the first and most important issue. They will collapse 
and kill people. Whoever is passing by, whoever is nearby, whoever has been operating here, they will just, we can just imagine what will happen. In addition to loss of, there will be loss of generation, damage to property, injury to personnel, maybe some will not die but just get injured, to personnel and the public, as well as damage to neighboring companies which are in close proximity to the power station. So that, to me, is the first and most compelling reason why we should do something about our cooling towers. Furthermore, the repowered station will require only four cooling towers to support the generation of 90 megawatts. We are rehabilitating to 90 megawatts. We will remain with enough capacity to support the new power station <coughs> repowered. Hence, the demolition of cooling towers 1 and 2 will not affect the operation and performance of the repowered plant. Then cooling towers 3, 4, 5, and 6, that is the, rem the, the remaining ones, will be refurbished to make them safe and improve on efficiency and reliability in support of the 90 megawatt generation. So those that remain will then do work on it. It's contained in the voluminous report by the consultant, which will then make them even safer so that should there be a cyclone, a normal cyclone, <coughs> it can, we can have a fair chance of protecting lives and equipment. The plant also requires more space to accommodate, the plant upgrade rather, also requires more space to accommodate the equipment. Perhaps on the list of <coughs> on the list of reasons. But the very first one where we are sitting on a real risk of a collapse of, of a structure and it will cause un, unthinkable damage and, and, and harm to the people. Let's go on. Uh, now, in response to some of the frequently asked questions, we were then looking at what were some of the questions that we can preempt and answer. Uh, the size of cooling tower 1 and 2 at 15 megawatts each is not compatible with the current turbines as they were built for 15 megawatt turbines. It's not like we are throwing away value. They will not be used. There will be no smoke coming out of there. They will just remain there waiting for a, for a cyclone to come and do harm. So we are not going, they are not going to be used anyway. They, if anything, we will leave them there waiting for disaster. Building new cooling towers off-site, there was a suggestion, why not build off-site? would not be feasible as the cooling towers are required in close proximity to the power station. You need cooling as part of power generation. Uh, we take coal from Wange, we burn it, we raise steam, we take water, we boil the water, we've got steam. That steam needs to come back into the system. Before it can do that, it goes through some cooling system, which is assisted by these cooling towers. So you can't have them away from the power plant that you are building. It's a necessary element of the whole power station. The refurbishment of cooling towers 3, 4, 5, and 6 will revive and maintain the smoke that standards memento in a safe, more reliable, more efficient repowered plant. So that iconic view will still be maintained with the 3, 4, 5 units that will remain. Even if they were, like, again, if, even if they were to remain there, there will be no smoke coming out of them because they are redundant. <coughs> now, why not make them, there was a, an issue, why not make them some, some tourist attraction, blah, blah. It is not possible to adopt the Orlando Tower strategy of making it a tourist attraction. <coughs> why? BPS is still a running plant. It can't then be, it's a, by law, a, a protected area. <coughs> you can't then have a tourist thing is on within a protected area. At the same time, the condition of the towers does not allow. The condition will make it such that you paint, put in pictures, tomorrow it collapses and kills people. I, I'm not sure that, if that would be the right kind of decision. Uh, the Orlando Power, power Station Towers, it, it's a power station that is decommissioned, and the towers, we are informed they were still intact, so they could they, the luxury in South Africa of doing that kind of, making that kind of decision. Having said so, in our neighbor in South Africa, the same South Africa, some old cooling towers have been successfully demolished to preserve safety of public. In other words, this not, it would not be a new thing 
under the sun that we are demolishing these cooling towers or this kind of cooling towers. So there was, there is we have evidence of such being such thing happening in South Africa, where a controlled demolition is. If we just run through that, the Athlon cooling towers of South Africa. size of it just means there's a great deal of work that has, has, has to be done. We have just over 7,200 holes. The explosives that we're using is a uh, water gel type explosive, which is quite uh, robust and reliable. So we will line up all of the explosives over a period of about a third of a second, and then we'll separate the towers by about half a second each. Uh, the total amount of explosives will be about 300 which will be spaced over quite a period of time to break up the uh, various small explosions which are going on. It'll take in the region of sort of six, seven seconds or so. Okay, this is just to show that elsewhere where they had a similar problem, after obviously doing the assessments, this is what they did. They demolished, it's a controlled demolition and implosion that is meant to leave the area safe. Now, progress towards this demolition, we have so we, ZPC after doing that analysis, we sought the, the, the approval of the board of directors and shareholders which was granted uh, in good faith, I must emphasize in good faith, an international tender was then advertised in the local newspapers and the site visit was conducted on 30th May 2019, the second visit 25th June, and we had, which closed on the 9th of July, which is sometime next week, for us to identify a suitable consultant who can do the controlled demolition. We've done another risk workshop internally to see in what are the possible risks associated with this. Then in general, what engagements have we done? Uh, for the whole project, we've got environmental and social impact assessment, which we conducted and was granted by EMA. As part of that, the stakeholder consultation, in fact, we commissioned a consultant registered by EMA. In this case, it was Zaidic, it's a local engineering consulting company, who did the study for us and submitted the documents to EMA, and they did some the consultations of various personnel or people around the, around Lawai, including a public hearing that was held at Amphitheater in May 2016, which in person I attended. <coughs> uh, the environmental management plan is available for inspection at EMA Lawai and we've got the volume of it with us here. We were also talking to Blawayo in the, with the same project, leading to us having a water supply agreement with Blawayo City Council. It's there in writing and signed. We had joined ZPC, BCC committee for coming works in support of the project. Having said that, uh, this platform remains a good platform for us to reinforce the engagements so that we can all move together in the same direction. I have a question. All these things that you were doing, they happened in here in Lawa. Yes. Did you speak to the rest of the minister okay. at all? Did no, no, no. you speak to the mayor? Not to the office of the mayor, but to the mayor. Angel, did you speak to him? Does he have a copy of the report that they are talking about? Hmm? No, he doesn't. So you understand why he's refusing to come and sit here? I apologize. Yeah, 
that this is this is a huge learning point for which I want to sincerely acknowledge the oversight, the technical oversight. But uh, going forwards, I hope we really take it in good faith that it was not to demean or to undermine the office of the of his worship or the rest of the minister, and we take the advice of the honourable minister of energy. Right. I want you from today to work closely with the council. Keep them updated of what is happening. Give them documents. Okay. We cannot just come and do things. It is a big thing. When you hear people saying going to to that to is there, it's sentimental. Power is there, yes, one power. But in Jangati for years. Work properly with the rest. The minister must know she's here now because I asked you to come because I recognize that she's the authority in the province. At local authority level, it's the mayor, it's the council, yeah, BCC. They must be spoken to. They represent Abantu. When they end the attack, how do they do it? Hmm? How do they do it? And you look at authority now, all is buried. You sit with the mayor, you go and talk to the mayor and say, Mayor, local authorities around Zimbabwe, oh, there's 350 million. Steady, I look at me, I want to have a bad time. I'm a kid. Actually, I'm a kid. 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 I'm so you have to sit, the mayor must know how much is owed by Bulawa City Council to what? To Zesa. Is our channel, we have a We to be in darkness. Communication is very, very important. And respect for authority. I have to apologize in Badala on behalf of Avantu Anaban, is this. Anjo. Mina, made and call this over Avantu Anaban. But in terms of the Kumela, I'm not officing stretch in the line. Made and Kumela, so on case Kona. Umeans are nigging number army. Anytime we are for Nella, Mamma, my problems, always is Allah. I want a copy of that the report given to them. I also want the uh, consultant's report. Give the mayor and other interested organizations in Lao. Give them Baboni Piracho. Babali, Babi Bazi, Mabli Tabana is VCC of Bazo, who's Bali Buzi, Cassis. Take those people by Bona Lapa. I hope you have arranged to this. Yeah. We're waiting here. Yes, vehicles. Transport. Is it just close by? Yes, so we'll go there and see. So, right, number two. As if you no promise, I no more enough. Ukulumea ma projects ya watanda ni nangoba. As a later man, la market, liza wenza nini, loko di ukulumele. When I do this project, one thing, as you are working here, I want you and your staff to be able to communicate with the people here in the local language. Next presentation, ebe. As you. Yeah. So, if you know each other, I'm a detail, I'm a project now. I have to decide. I'm a boy, I'm a boy, I'm a boy. 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 I'm a boy, I'm a administrative work would have happened for us to commence lawyer repowering. Okay. Then it takes two years to implement, mm -hmm. that is March 2022. Okay. That presentation. Then the demolition, we are closing the tender on the 9th, which is next week. 
we get a identify suitable contractor to do it properly. If we are happy, this preparation in our requirements was that no more than two months, then the, the actual demolition is a matter of <coughs> it's a matter of seconds, then rubble, move of the rubble becomes a longer process. Yeah. So it's something that can happen <coughs> in the next three months, yes. the actual demolition. Okay. Then I want to know job creation. <coughs> I want you to compute the number of jobs that can be created from the project we are talking about. Minister, in our culture, it's not our culture to Tonisi Square at the event in public. We are Tonisi Square at the event to our local authorities. We are included all these years. In as much as the local authority may all is this. Yeah, we are owed millions of dollars by Zesa for this power station in reality. Yes. So, in our view, we don't owe Zesa in our view. That's why we're in court. And uh, second, I think uh, this, uh, this gathering, see, we in and and I must emphasize, would be under protest. Because uh, uh, me and you, uh, you are for this chance, uh, I think you know what I'm a medical practitioner. And uh, my acting town clerk is also the corporation. We can't come here and ask that these people be judges in our cases now till a seat of law in Lelugu's in PC. That's why we're in court and we, we think that the court is the final arbiter in our dispute and our dispute must be resolved conclusively by the court. Singaka Kulumi into his name. But anyway, in Jawa's recipe is Zile, Siza Zakulum. But I have you gone out with. I noticed you program very best in the of it. Yes. Uh, 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 as it's a school manager, as the school uh, uh, from the floor, uh, which is very, very disheartening. Uh, we have been invited like anyone else. It's, it's fine. And Susu uh, Atines Gordon across the town, which we end up as well, of course. This colossal course is just across, across town, and you are called here to please run up with Zokuluma into it. So, in Kuma of Anna into Rogazin, you must take what has consultation. Still out now, two early second step order consultation. A city of life, we don't know of the first step order consultation. And uh, what were the, the outcomes of that first step order consultation? Um, in any case, Tina, we're not stakeholders. We are stockholders. Yes. We are the owners of this. Yes. These poor people, they own this thing. So we cannot be called to a consultative conference uh, when we are stockholders. Um, then uh, your engineer speaks about a consultant who has hired to assess the structural integrity of these towers. Uh, she has some engineers, qualified engineers. Yes. Uh, they have not been asked to assess their own property. Yes. Not to ask me to report to the council. As council, not to council. Yes. Uh, the chairperson is not planning. The committee, committee members are here. They're planning. Yes. They're planning committee. They don't know of that report from our engineers, and we are told it by a tenant who is your your local resident. They have to claim care. You see, we, we can't accept. If anything, these towers, these towers is have a historical significance for the city of Lahore. There can be no Lahore without those, those towers. <laughs> if you destroy those towers, you you rather just destroy the city of Lahore yes. because yes. there can be no uh, city hall without those towers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then uh, if it's going up, it's just like it's destroying these towers. Is akin to destroying Great Zimbabwe monuments. Yes. Because when you destroy Great Zimbabwe monuments, yes. you are saying there's no Zimbabwe. Yes. You see? So, Star Gunanze Lokonoko, it goes beyond, it goes beyond your, uh, into, and then when you say, when the engineer speaks of Utkulam hazards, if those towers can be, can be a hazard to the people and what have, uh, we have not received that reporting from our own engineers uh, to, to say those towers are a hazard because they are the ones who are employed by the city to do our structural inspections of all our uh, city buildings and structures and report to a committee of council. Mm -hmm. What the problem is, and then these people 
will then make a decision. You see, whether to destroy or not to destroy. So we can't be told to do a consultant who has hired somewhere outside the where we don't even know. And uh, uh, went into went in and inspected these uh, these uh, uh, towers and said uh, my tower that we not destroy. And in any case, they said the same engineer doesn't even know who would tell my towers and go the likely time frame where they can be uh, destroyed. I mean, uh, collapse and whatever. He doesn't even know. And uh, we have been saying to EZPC, uh, if they want to build a, a new power station, in fact, we are looking for investors to build a new power station. Uh, and if this one is uh, has outlived its designing life plan, they must come to us, talk to us. We'll give them land to build the new power station. <laughs> And then, uh, because then case we are looking for independent power producers. Otherwise, you are going to be able to be told at that site uh, a new power station. So they can, they must come to us. We'll give them land to build a new power station. Mm -hmm. This one is is way past its this design lifestyle, life uh, span, as he says. And then, uh, in any case, uh, the people of Lua are not even benefiting from this power station. They are not. Look at the employment and God. Your engineer can tell us not even able to pick this in the bed. Yes. <laughs> and you say, uh, you know, it will benefit the poor flower. Then, uh, <laughs> then uh, lastly, <laughs> la lastly, let me say this. Let me say this. If uh, Zesa or ZPC is uh, serious about consulting the city of Lahore as stockholders and owners of this property, mm -hmm. they know where to find us. They know where to call us here. They know where to find us, and they'll come. Let's go to Lenihale. We sit down, we, we come up with a, a position. But uh, the long and short of it, Honorable Minister, is that it's a court. Uh, let, not, let us not be contemptuous of our court processes. Uh, let's respect the court processes. Uh, I think we have several uh, cases, I think four, if I'm not mistaken, between this and the subsidiaries. Uh, let's allow court process. Uh, and and then we can now start talking. Because we cannot call I want to love it was worse over my churches. La Papali Church made no plan about the process disputed less. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> But I think it was But I see I was a court. In that relation, the drama. I can understand. I am saying that 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 consultants <laughs> Proposed repowering of Lavayo uh, power station EMP, EMP, what is it? Environmental management plan. I don't know how many pages. Right.
Minister of Energy and Power Development. Anje, 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 
ukuze bazwisise lokho efuna ukwenza uyakwazi umntwana ngawafuna ukufuna ukuhlasha injection eclinic yabaleka kodwa kufuna ukumela apha anje iko amaphilisi kamlanda sozwithi anje so kumele uzama ukumnce ukuncenga 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 i injection imele ingene umuntu ungene emzimbe anje so eh communication ukukhuluma inani zela pha wani first thing uzoxolisa izela pha ukuthi nina libe le information ukuthi kube ne consultation izesa the local authority athi kodwa i authority yes anje i local authority ithola i authority ivela kini lina Nyathaba kuno ukuthi liyakhuluma ukuthi lina yini lamandla mina ukuthi ngibe nguminister la yini Sezwana so ngikhona ukuthi ngibe ngikhanyela lokho okwenza lena lithanda Ngikhona ukulijengisa ukuthi hayi kule cyclone ezayo asuke nda asenzini lokho asenzini lokho okwenza into abantu abathola imisebenzi Ngithe ngxa ngingoministry of energy baza ngitshela minza abatshela mina ukuthi umsebenzi unless kule good reason umuntu ogebha sure that's why langa khona anje but kula manye ama skills othi siyadai sidingile sibe senza ni saswela izimbabwe yethu yonke sonke futhi sezwana yeah Bakho ngihamba konjimbo ngale ethuweshe ngekhaya ngithi ngale uzathola uloba kusibindi okhulumelela uloba kusibindi ose mazowe ethe yangani ethe khona ngale wahlwa sana khona ngale umntana ke ime ngikhambisa esikolo kathesi uyibanka elandani niya ngizwa ye singabantu bani mina njengo minister of course ngumntwana ala Uba ukuthi ukuthi wayesebenza lo yathi next door lapha anje ngiyayithanda into le ayisifile but ngiye ayisifile isizadinikele lina lezithoveli ibhayisikili siya efamona athuze kunithakisa ibulawayo amagetsi ayihlu qasile ukuthi 60 60 megawatts esisifuna so lina njengabadala ngicela ngicabanga khona noku ukuthi ye kubanjanisa abantwana abaphambanisile abantwana baphambanisile sikusegcekeni indaba lenyizwe last week ngahle ngathi hayi hayi asambe nise khuma abantwana ikhona la so ngiyaqeli ukuthi mina njengo minister wenu ole responsibility yokuthi libe lamagetsi ezindi anje umsebenzi wami umsebenzi wami futhi e power development ukukhangelelwe kimi ngikhulumeni ukuthi kundaba ze power yimi okumele ngibe la magetsi nginika abantu amagetsi wonke ukuthi ngxa ekhala bakhala ngani ngibone enye ividiyo lapho umnyuma wami ekhala esithu minister of zesa ikho ngizela useka zesa ikho ngenzeni ngomntwana ibambanisile ubaba wekhuma ngumithisi ubaba ngiyezaka uyayikhuluma next rider hayi umntwana omubambanisile siyili inhlovu singenzani baba wathi wathi ubhadale ngawo ubhadale ngabe ethathana bethathana anje so ngiyabe lokho ngixolisa size sivumela eh nifuna babe lokho bekhuluma lekhansi umeya ngiyambona ukuthi uku uzondile ngizamdinga kumele ngibona nilaye nina ukukhulumelayo ngiqolise futhi sivumelayo engakufuniyo ende kumele sizwisisane ingadiliki into le anje ngizela lezesa lani leza la ngifuna ukuthi singaqeda lapha siyephandle sibone lizibonela ngamehlini njengabantu abadala ngoba sonke silezindlu yabonda lapha kusonga nokule crack la ndingana abantu badilizela phana bakhe futhi ancho sizwana so angifuni ukuthi sibe sifihlela ngizinto ikho nithe khona ama report la ngxa le wafuna ancho yabonda how thick it is 
Next time, singa inzu is interested in what the figure will be positioned. Anjo, huh? Silama, I'm an investor. Get cheese, sir. Will be part of this. Anjo, the asset you know there. Grand city asset in Chuti. You testing a seven. Who went to school? Is a two permanent sector in this country? Ati Fasa Fasa and Jebich and Alice Lama projects. It's to win. Lama ideas are called. Sipu will invite our to go blow up. Next week, Patron is a Muzarapa, much south, much north. Mifuna, Sidi, Sicheng, Savantu, in sevens, Ogmelians, Lanes, where air markets. I just see the power to the people. Power to the people literally. What did the Nile man? But it was powerful to exist. So now we see him walk with me. He am a victor. I'm a massing a lot. Yes, power. I see that. I just is one. So we are trying to see what it is. I focus on the negative. Now we are thinking is wind about it. Not how we focus on this. This is a win. Not saying that we don't want to be in trouble in the city. Kude art, hantu kwa zuko trowa. It trowing pele ya ya zalati le nye nye nyabo nye shoneni le nye South Africa, hantu ni zafu nchini hasa kupele sisi kwenye la kuku kutoa shida pamoja kani kuku ushe ikalu cha yetu yangu apa ikani kona pa, masi juu la la pamoja kwa ukraine. Siboni la kusomu le zi 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 hantu, umatoe luto ba kani ndi njia baina le. So the Nibu permanent sector is Katuta Aga Aga Kumi, but made an independent. The tribe is the last few food. As food now to be now Akulela, Nazale Lola, Mafunda, Empopa, Nazare Matrovana, Empopo, Akulela. But it took situation. But in easy Babri, and Fluent is in this point delay. Isn't it up? Over one money one bonk, but it ever for this delay. So, I want to know what I mean. You better. You tell me what I mean. You tell me what I mean.